In the late 1800s and early 1900s, a group of photographers living in Jerusalem, known as the American Colony, took thousands upon thousands of photographs of Israel-Palestine and the surrounding region. One of the more interesting things they did was ask the people of Bethlehem to reenact the story of the Book of Ruth, which took place in Bethlehem many centuries and millennia earlier. The reason this was so interesting is that the people living in Bethlehem in the late 1800s and early 1900s lived lives that had many parallels to the lives of the ancient Israelites. What I'm going to do is show you the photographs about the Book of Ruth, and in order to make the story flow a little smoother, I'll also add some other photographs from the American colony. There was a famine in Bethlehem, Beit Lechem, in Judah, and a man named Elimelech took his family, left Israel, and moved to the fields of Moab. He died in Moab, and his two sons, Machlon and Chilion, took over as heads of the family. They married two Moabite women. One was named Orpah, and the other was named Ruth. At this point in time, both of the brothers died, and their mother, Naomi, was now a widow, and she had already lost her two sons. Here we see Naomi telling her two daughters-in-law that she is leaving Moab, she's going home to Israel, and she has nothing left to give. Ruth and Orpah should stay back in Moab. It takes some convincing, but Orpah agrees with Naomi and says, I'm turning back to Moab. But Ruth would not let Naomi go. Ruth followed her, and this is where she famously says, wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people are my people, and your God is my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. The two set off, and when they reach Bethlehem, the women of Bethlehem are in shock. When they see Naomi without her sons, without her husband, they say, is this Naomi? And Naomi says, don't call me Naomi, which comes from the word pleasant. Call me Mara, which comes from the word bitter. God, Shaddai, has made my life bitter. At this point in time, the narrator tells us two pieces of information. First, it was the beginning of the barley harvest in Bethlehem. And what that means is that for the next two months or so, everything and anything that is going to happen in this town will be taking place in the fields. Second, we learn that Naomi has a redeemer named Boaz. In ancient Israel, there was no such thing as an insurance company. So if you lost your home or your field or you got sold into slavery, it would be up to a relative who was a redeemer to come and help you. And Naomi had a redeemer, an important person in the town of Bethlehem named Boaz. Now, we know that Boaz is connected to Naomi, but Ruth does not. At some point in time, Ruth realizes that she needs to get food for her family. And she tells Naomi that she's going to go out gleaning amongst the fields, as the poor people did, to try and get some leftover stalks so that they could get some grain. And as chance would have it, the one field that Ruth ended up going to was a field that belonged to Boaz. Boaz notices Ruth and he asks his servants, who is that? They tell him that she is Ruth the Moabite who came with Naomi all the way from Moab. Boaz goes over to Ruth and he says, stay with me, stay in my field, stay with my servant girls. My servant boys will not touch you and you can even drink some of the water we have drawn. Ruth, who is a poor and destitute widow, Ask Boaz, why are you so kind to me? Is there anything I have done? And Boaz says, it's because you were so kind to Naomi, going to a land not your own. And he blesses Ruth, may the Lord reward your deeds. May you have a full recompense from the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have sought refuge. Boaz extends his kindness to her and invites her to join with his people to partake in a meal. He goes even further and says to all his workers that Ruth is allowed to glean 
amongst the sheaves, which means she's not just picking up the leftover grain. She's even allowed to take some of the main part of the grain. Ruth beats out the barley that she had gleaned, which means that she is separating the seed from the stalk. And it's so much, it's about six gallons of grain that she takes home with her that day. And she goes to Naomi and she says, guess what happened? I got so much grain. And Naomi says, where did you glean so much? Where did this all come from? And Ruth says, from the field of a man named Boaz. At this point, Naomi turns to Ruth and blesses God and says, Guess what, Ruth? Boaz is a redeemer. He is there for our family. Naomi tells Ruth to go to Boaz's field and to stay with Boaz the whole time. And Ruth does so. Ruth stays in the field of Boaz throughout the barley harvest and even throughout the wheat harvest. A total of about two months. At this point in time, Naomi steps in and says, Ruth, it's time for you to find a new home. And in order to understand what Naomi says, we first need to understand what a threshing floor is. A threshing floor was a public place where many people gathered, and it's where all the farmers would thresh their grain. What that means is to crush the grain to separate it from the stalk. This was usually done with a sledge that was dragged by animals. After the grain was threshed, it was then winnowed. And what that means is it was thrown into the wind and the wind would separate the chaff from the grain. And Naomi tells Ruth and she says, tonight is the night that Boaz is going down to the threshing floor where he will be winnowing. Meaning tonight is the end result of his two months of hard work. And you should bathe yourself, you should anoint yourself, you should put on your best clothes and you should go down to the threshing floor. But don't just say hello to Boaz when everyone else is around. Wait for him to lie down and at that point when it's pitch black and nobody can see anybody, you should go lie at Boaz's feet. And at that point you should do whatever he tells you to do. Ruth does exactly what Naomi tells her to do. And she goes to Boaz in the dark night and she lies at his feet and he's startled. He says, who are you? Who is this? What's going on? And Ruth says, it's me, Ruth. Spread your wing over me, meaning take me under your wing. And Boaz says, I am touched, especially that you haven't gone after any of the younger men. You've come after me. I'm an older man. And I would very much like to move forward, but there are a few things we have to do first. First of all, we need to secretly separate from each other. I don't want anyone getting ideas. So the next morning they sneak away and Boaz gives Ruth a great deal of grain, about six measures, a great deal. And Ruth goes back to Naomi and she tells her exactly what happened. Naomi says, good, Boaz will now move forward. But things actually get very complicated very quickly. What happens is, is that there's another person in this story, in the background. And that person is named Plony Almoni, which essentially means John Doe in Hebrew. And Plony Almoni is first in line to help Naomi to be a redeemer, whereas Boaz is second in line. So Boaz goes to the city gate, gathers 10 men, sits down Plony Almoni and says to him, hey, would you like to redeem the field of Naomi, which also means taking care of this elderly widow? And Plony Almoni says, sure, I'll be the redeemer. But then Boaz says, there's a caveat here. There's also the younger Ruth. Would you like to take her into your family as well? And Plony Almoni says, no, I don't want to do that. We're not sure why. Perhaps it's because Ruth was a Moabite. Perhaps Plony had way too much going on in his family, but he declines. And therefore Boaz stands up and says, I will acquire the field of Naomi, and I will also marry Ruth the Moabitess, the former wife of Mahlon, and may his name not be erased from Israel. And the people sitting at the gate say, we are witnesses. 
And then they say a wonderful line, May the Lord make the woman who is coming into your house like Rachel and Leah, both of whom built up the house of Israel. This vignette is probably the closest we get to a wedding ceremony in ancient Israel. And then we are told that Ruth becomes Boaz's wife and they have a son. The last part of our story doesn't focus on Ruth. It actually focuses on who I believe to be is the main character of the book, Naomi. The women of Bethlehem who were once shocked at the downfall of Naomi now turn to her and tell her how lucky she is to have a daughter-in-law such as Ruth. Naomi takes care of the baby even though she doesn't have a genetic connection to the baby. The baby comes from Ruth and Boaz, not from her side of the family. The neighbors see this and at this point they cry out, a son has been born to Naomi, when really the son has been born to Ruth. And they name him Oved, which means servant, a servant of God. And Oved was the father of Yishai, and Yishai was the father of David, King David. All of the photos that I showed you today are available for free from the Library of Congress website. Special thanks to BiblePlaces.com for helping me make sense of all of these photographs. And also one last thing you might have noticed. These photos were taken over a period of about 40 years. So you may have noticed that some of the main characters are played by two or three different people. For example, Ruth looks very different in some of the different shots. If you want to study Biblical Hebrew with me and learn to read the book of Ruth on your own, come study at the Institute of Biblical Culture. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you for my next video.